This is the future. Good day, my old and new Cribsonians, and welcome back to your Fire Marshal videos. And this will be video number 7. Today, we are going to be talking about evacuation. What to do and what not to do while evacuating. Also, what you should be aware of if in case you get trapped. So, you are sitting in your cubicle one day working, minding your own business, or inside your workshop and suddenly you hear this what do you do <gasps> fire alarms are situated everywhere in your workshop or in your office and are normally indicated by this sign some areas that are not equipped with electrical fire alarm systems will be equipped with this air horn systems. Please familiarize yourself with the type of alarm that is in your area and what it sounds like. Call points, as seen here, provides a manual way of initiating a fire alarm by breaking the glass with your finger. And don't worry, it won't cut your finger because it's coated with a clear vinyl coating. So, Let's get to evacuations. Here are some things to keep in mind when evacuating. Fires are very dangerous and you should always make sure that you will not endanger yourself or others when attempting to fight a fire. When a fire is discovered, assist any person in immediate danger to safety first and only if it can be accomplished without danger to yourself. Remember the motto, your safety first. If the fire is small, you may attempt to put it out with a fire extinguisher. Fire marshals need to ensure that all the employees have evacuated. So you will be the last one out. Inform your control room of the fire. It is recommended that a fire marshal should always make a quick sweep through the building when everyone has evacuated. And remember to do the sweep with the fire extinguisher in hand to make sure that you can put out any spot fire or any other things you can find on your way there. Now while the guys are evacuating, a first aid box and a fire extinguisher has to be taken to the assembly point with the people that's evacuating. So normally your first aider will grab the first aid box and the fire marshal will grab the fire extinguisher. So you probably wonder why do you want to take a first aid box with? Well you know people, they might panic, they might run, trip, fall, hurt themselves and in that case a first aid box will be necessary to at least cover up some of the scrapes and cuts just stabilize some of the patients while you're waiting for the ambulance services to arrive to give further care to the people. The fire marshal also needs to make sure that the main power is switched off if it can be accomplished. And now where I work, they normally lock the DB boards with a lock so you don't have any access to it. But luckily in the last year or so, they've put up a main trip switch cable that if you pull the tag, it will automatically trip the main switch. On the DB board so that helps a lot and remember if you do switch off all the power your class C fires will automatically become a class A close doors and windows in the area as you go out remember closing doors and windows will actually contain the fire in that area and if all the oxygen is burned up in that area the fire will go down and hopefully burn itself out and you will actually prevent the fire from spreading quicker if you are working in a big mining workshop where you've got those big doors it's recommended that you don't even try and close those doors because it's going to take way too much time for you to close those doors rather evacuate the area safely and remember when you get to your assembly point immediately take a roll call of everyone that is there normally what the guys would do is they will have a register on and uh, they'll have everyone on the register that's there for the day and when you go out to the assembly point remember to take that register with you so that you can do a roll call and make sure that everyone is there at the assembly point. If someone is missing, you have to find out where that person is as soon as possible. If he's maybe trapped inside the building, you have to give it over to the emergency rescue team so they can do a search and rescue and find that person while they're in there. So at this point, 
you've evacuated, you are safe at your assembly point, you're doing a roll call, someone is missing. That person is trapped. So what does that person have to look for? What does he have to do while he's trapped inside? Will be to stay low to the ground. Remember, heat, gases, smoke, everything will rise to the ceiling. So if you're down on the ground, that's where the most of the oxygen will be. So stay on all fours, down to the ground, and maneuver yourself out to the nearest exit, if it can be done. But some interesting things happen inside these fires, and you might see one of them if you are unfortunate enough to be trapped. One of those things we call a rollover. So what is a rollover? Let me show you. Rollover occurs when ignited fire gases or incompletely burnt fuels rise to the ceiling and spreads out horizontally. Then smoke appears to suddenly start burning. If nothing is done to ventilate the room or cool the air, this condition can lead to a flashover. So what is a flashover? Let me show you. A flashover is a sudden, simultaneous ignition of everything in the room at once. Then the last thing that we're going to talk about is a backdraft. So remember when I said, go on all fours, stay low to the ground, see if you can get to the exit. Before you get to a door, remember to touch the door with the back of your hand and feel that the door is warm. If the door is warm, there's probably a fire on the other side of the door. Now you won't know if the fire is still burning or if it's burned out. So here's the trick. If you need to open the door, stay behind the door, open it slowly. Don't open the door with your face in the door because you might get caught by flames or you might be caught in an explosion that we call a backdraft. So how does a backdraft work? Backdraft is an explosion that occurs when oxygen is introduced into a room full of hot gases. So now let's say that room was closed for a while, the fire has burned itself out, but all the air and gases in that room is still hot. Now you are crawling on this side and you open up the door and suddenly the oxygen from your side goes in and that oxygen will reignite the gases and there'll be a violent explosion. That's why sometimes when the guys go from outside and they break the windows, they'll get an explosion because of that sudden rush of fresh oxygen that's introduced into that room. And that is that for today. So let's do a quick summary. Know what type of alarm is in your area. Know what the alarm sounds like and know where they are situated. Things to keep in mind. Assist any person in immediate danger to safety and if the fire is small, you may attempt to put it out with a fire extinguisher. Fire motion needs to ensure employees evacuate safely. Ensure that main power is switched off, close doors and windows behind you, and take roll call at the assembly point and report it to the emergency services that arrive on scene. So we are almost done with our fire marshal series. So next week we will be discussing some inspections. Specifically, inspecting fire hydrant ho uh, boxes, the hoses, and the hydrants. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to my channel and uh, hit that bell icon if you want to get notified of the next fire marshal video that's coming. Also keep an eye out for my BMW repair video which is going extremely slowly. I had a shitty time trying to get the uh, injectors out but you can see that in the other videos. So until next time guys remember whatever you are doing keep it safe and cheers. Hey guys if you like this video please consider subscribing to this channel. Give me a thumbs up because it will really help out this channel. And feel free to drop a comment. Then something new for you all, there is now a Facebook page, so feel free to follow me on my Facebook group. We will be discussing behind the scene features and videos that I have done. Also, don't forget to go to my website at www.cripzone.co.za where you can go straight to my podcasts if you want to by clicking on the podcast icon you'll be taken straight to the anchor podcast page where I do my podcast and remember when you go to my YouTube page 
there will be a place where you can subscribe to my channel um, and remember if you have any comments please feel free to drop me an email and on my youtube front page there is now a paypal donation button where you can feel free to donate to this channel to help it grow and to help to support me thanks for watching and until next time cheers